from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. On today's episode, head strength and conditioning coach for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Marcellus Bowman, joins the show to discuss working with the team throughout the offseason, the various diets and workout plans players are on. He also lets us know some of the beasts of the gym for the Tie Cats, and the Tie Cats announced they've signed another running back. It's Thursday, March 28th, 2024, and this is Tie Cats today. Coach Boom joins us today to discuss what players are doing to stay fit throughout the offseason and He's a name we constantly hear from players throughout our talks with them and always a guy I learn so much from whenever I speak to him about vitamins and diets and workouts. And honestly, if you're listening to this and you're not a pro athlete, you're going to learn a ton about what you should be doing in your everyday life to maintain that healthy lifestyle. And he joins me now. Coach, how you doing today, man? Right, Brady, I'm great, man. How are you doing? I've been doing good. I've been doing good. And in the off season, you're still busy as ever. You have a lot of guys coming in for training. What does that look like for you during the off season? Um, yeah, that's my. Uh, that's where I think I have a, a pretty large impact on the team. Mm-hmm. Is uh, you know, one putting the guys back together again the first part of the off season. Yep. Uh, which is underrated, and then uh, trying to peak them at the right time right before uh, training camp. So um, things have been awesome so far, but uh, it's uh, it's been a lot of work, but I, I love every, every bit of it. With so many different guys wanting so many different things throughout the offseason to improve on, whether they want to gain weight or, the, or gain muscle or whatever it may be, how do you kind of decipher who does what in terms of diet and training? Well, you know, I have a, a set of rules Mm -hmm. i guess you can say that i go by based on one my experience as an athlete actually being in the cfl playing for five years uh knowing what it feels like to go through a season where you started on our defense and started on special teams at the same time so yeah a lot of volume and then also you know having played only special teams for a year Mm -hmm. and okay i'm a little bit fresher and you know it's a little bit different approach to the offseason so one i think my experience as an athlete helps and then two um my perspective on performance is uh, is one that is not archaic. What I mean by yep. that is uh, it's not one where it's just like, get as big as you can, get as strong as you can, let's see what happens. Yep. No, let's see what can you do to maximize your performance. So uh, I have a general set guideline that I have for most people at certain positions. And then if someone really needs some nuanced approach, then I'll do that for them specifically. But most guys, they need to master the basics first. And so you're saying every single position group has their own set of rules, if you will, or their own workouts that they're doing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, you know, what I would give to Stav, Stavros mm-hmm. is different than what I would give to Kyle, which is different than, I mean, Kyle Wilson, by the way, yeah. or different than what I would give to, um, you know, Mo Diallo or, you know, yeah. uh, Mason Bennett or something like that. So, you know, each player, because their position requires a different skill set and ability, uh, they'll get a different program based off of that. But even within that, within their position groups, um, there's only minor variation. Um, at what point? At what point during the offseason do you want guys to start focusing on getting back to game form and, and getting gearing up to play? At what is there a point in the offseason where you want them to really start to step it up? Yep. So that's actually a great question. So um, the beginning of March is when that time starts. Okay. Right. So um, say we chase numbers. And what I mean by that is like, how much do you squat? How much do you lift? How fast are you running? How far are you jumping? Right. Mm -hmm. We chase those numbers, uh, say January and February. Uh, so we try to get those metrics up Mm -hmm. and then once those metrics are where they are, wherever you got, that's as high as they're going to get. Now we need to start becoming great football players, right? We've improved the tool bag, the tools that you have, now let's learn how to use those tools better, right? Yeah. Uh, the last thing you want to do is be a, a great athlete measurably, but you're not coordinated enough to actually use your your tools. So for sure, uh, typically around the beginning of March is when that starts. How many guys right now are in the locker room? Because a lot of guys are are all over in the states or wherever they're from. But how many guys right now are you working with every day throughout the week? Oh man, not not that many. Okay. Honestly, most of the guys I work with are all over the states okay. and all over Canada. So a lot of it is actually vir- uh, actually virtual. Yep. Uh, and then a few guys I work with in person. Um, and some of it's rehab, some of it's performance, uh, some of it might be you know just some one on one work. Mm-hmm. Like for example, with uh, Mason or with uh, JD, some of the guys that are in town, uh, I may give them some one on one work with the pads as far as their pass rush skills. Uh, so it's a little bit all over the place and spotty um during this part of the off season but say when we're a couple weeks out uh, my goal is to get 
all the local guys into one spot so yeah. we can play football before we have to play football. How do you go about those virtual training sessions and working with guys who might be in Texas or Florida? Yeah. Um, so it's really just making sure that we have clear communication on what is expected, mm -hmm. right? So every time I send them a program, it comes with an audio overview. So I explain exactly what I want. It has video links in it. So you know exactly what the exercise is. <laughs> A lot of times I'm demonstrating the, uh, the exercises. So the biggest thing is communication. Once the athlete knows what to do, mm -hmm. they can execute at a high level. That's why they're professional athletes. They know how to coordinate their body based on what they what they see. Uh, I just got to make sure that's clear first. And then after that, it's just a series of adjustments where mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I'll check in. How are you feeling? Is hamstrings tight? No, hamstrings feel great. Okay, cool. And we'll just kind of go through a few series of check-ins just to make sure everything is okay. When a new guy comes in, say if we sign someone, for example, a guy like Bar Brandon Barlow, if he comes in, are you talking to him right away to kind of see where he's at in terms of training? And are you kind of giving him your philosophies when you see a new guy come into the organization? Yeah, so for a new guy, um, that's exactly kind of how it goes, where I see what they're doing already. Mm -hmm. And then I see if there's any gaps I can fill. Uh, for a new guy, he may have a trusted coach that he's worked with already that has allowed him to be successful. And, you know, I don't want to disrupt that at yeah. all, right? So um, if anything, I just come in with a giving hand and letting them know that, hey, man, if you need anything, um, I'm always happy to help. Typically, it's the nutrition side where the training side, they'll take care of that. But the nutrition side is one of my strong suits. So um, I can offer a lot of help from that perspective. Uh, and then as I build more rapport with the player, as I build more trust with the player, then I'll get maybe a little bit more forward about certain things that I see in them that I think they can improve on. A big part about being a player, being a professional athlete is your diet. There's the working out part, but the diet is, is so yeah. important. But how do you go about, I guess, giving advice on what to eat? Because a football player's diet is a lot different than my diet or, or you know what I mean, like a, another professional sports diet. Man, yeah. So it's, um, you start as simple as possible. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't want to say like this is controversial, but. Typically, if you have a dietitian trying to help an athlete, they'll say food first. You got to change the foods that you're eating and different things like that. Having worked with a lot of athletes, yeah. right, both at Auburn University, down at UCF, and, of course, uh, throughout the, the rest of America on my online business, and then um, now as a head strength coach, you know, a lot of them aren't at a place where they can just – do a complete overhaul of the way they shop, the way they cook, the way they prepare, the way they pack their lunches. They're just not mm -hmm. ready for that. So typically I start with whatever is the one or two things that's missing from their plate. So what I'll do is I'll look at their plate and see how they eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'll see how they eat throughout the week, see what kind of resource they have uh, access to. Mm -hmm. And then I'll fill those two main gaps. For most players, it's protein and it's a multivitamin. Yep. It doesn't sound exciting, but when I tell you that is the two major things that is uh, missing from most players' uh, plates is enough protein and uh, vitamins and minerals. You check that box yeah. uh, that you've been missing as an athlete, and you'll see a, a significant improvement in performance within a week. What kind of vitamins are, are you suggesting? Like it, even to the regular person in every day, what, yeah. what kind of vitamins you should you be taking on a daily basis? Um, so – Individual vitamins uh, and minerals, I would say, of course, the B vitamins, mm -hmm. you definitely want vitamin D. Uh, if you want to prioritize anything, it's vitamin D. That yeah. thing will unlock a lot of potential in your body. Um, then also with that is magnesium, zinc. Um, yeah. And I say with those were probably the biggest ones. Like if you want to actually feel different from day one to day two, take some zinc and magnesium before you go to sleep For and sure. see what happens. For sure. it'll, it'll really bless you. So that's where I would start. But in general, if it's like a multivitamin, uh, you want to look for quality. Yeah. So, for example, you can't necessarily go to Walmart and find a good one. You would have to go online or go to the supplement shop and uh, find a high-quality one there. But uh, quality really does matter when it comes to multivitamins. I'm going to have to get you to send me some of the names of some vitamins you suggest because I'm not getting yeah, enough man. vitamins in my daily diet, so I'll, I'll definitely hit yeah. you up for some of those. I was talking yeah. to Bo Levi Mitchell uh, earlier in the week, and he mentioned to me that in terms of the quarterback – training and 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 diet and everything is constantly changing it seems like on a yearly basis you're you're seeing more fabs and more people say like oh this is what a quarterback should be doing or this but what do you think right now should is the way a quarterback should go about training movement first yeah movement first uh rotational athletes like baseball players like kickers quarterbacks uh soccer players um they're a special kind of athlete yeah. because they can't just effort their way 
Like, if you are a D lineman, you can just get strong and just effort your way. You can figure some things out, right? Running back, you know, certain other positions, you can effort your way through it. Mm -hmm. You can't effort your way through uh, being a quarterback because of how precise you have to be. Yeah. Right? So when it comes to training a a quarterback, of course, you want them to be strong, right? You want them to be agile. You want them to be quick. Uh, But we want to make sure that we're training them to where they can naturally rotate and and have power within that rotation. So, um, you know, the thing is, in today's world, thanks to social media, people will turn any movement into an exercise. Yeah. We're just like, at some point, we just got to keep it basic and then add some position specific on top of it. So, you know, when I was talking to the players at the beginning of the offseason, I was like, um, basically, strength is never a weakness and weakness is never a strength. Like so that. you have to be strong to begin with. Yeah. Right. Once you are strong, then you start to add on your position specific type of uh, training too and the same thing with the quarterbacks um now we kind of deviate away from weight training heavy a little earlier for them yeah uh, just because they don't need as much um but yeah rotational movement is probably the best thing for a uh quarterback now when it comes to throwing technique i don't touch that yeah that's not my pocket yeah, that's for not sure. what i'm supposed to do uh so i'll leave that to quarterback coaches and the gurus there uh, but as far as getting them to a good place athletically, you know, that's my pocket. When guys are coming in for training camp and when everyone starts to arrive, are you checking in with them to see what their progress has been since you last saw them, for example, come uh, back in November, October? Um, well, we do a physical. Yeah, the, <laughs> so basically, we'll, we'll, yeah, what's the physical yeah, we'll entail? <laughs> yeah, we'll get some uh, some numbers on them. Uh, also, we'll see how they look. You know, we all remember I have a, a good – visual memory so I'll, I'll remember how a guy looked yeah. at the end of the season versus how they look now and if it's one of those things where he comes and he's overweight or he's underweight you know at that point it's too late yeah. and it's, it's unfortunate and the goal is to make sure you have a team full of professionals mm-hmm. uh and by professional i mean their approach to the game and if they're professional they'll come in shape you know i've sent plenty of emails out this um and notes and text messages and i've called plenty of players to let them know what's expected of them yeah and what they'll need to be good at and even what scott would you know, uh, want from them as, you know, athletically. So, you know, the communication has been clear. They know what they're supposed to do. So if they show up in any other form other than that, then that was a conscious decision by them. And thankfully, we don't have too many of those players. What, what does an O-lineman's diet look like? Or the average O-lineman? Because I need to know. Oh, when you look at these guys and it's it's crazy just how how strong and fast they can still be and yet how big their frame could be at the same time. No, they they are a special athlete. The, I'm sure the average person who's not familiar with, you know, measurements and numbers will look at an old lineman and be like, oh, well, that's probably not healthy. Yeah. But if you look at the percentage of their body that is muscle and tendon and bone, it's a, it's a freakish amount. And for them to be able to carry and move that weight the way they do, it's very, very special. Now, their diet is, <laughs> excuse me, is, uh, oh, man, it can be anywhere <laughs> between, Four and a half, four, 4,500 calories to 7,000 calories wow. a day, especially during training camp. Wow. So it's a lot of energy. Um, and, you know, it can be composed of any amount of protein, fats, and carbs. But, you know, the goal for old linemen especially is quality. Because mm-hmm. one thing they can tend to do is lower the quality of the foods they eat so they can get more calories in because it's hard to eat healthy food and still get 7,000 calories, 6,000 calories in a day. So it does take some um, some manipulation and some smart decisions, um, nutritional decisions made to to get to where they're trying to get to. Um, but it's definitely possible, and that's why I love my job because I get to do that part that part too. I, it's it's crazy to see, and, and some of the best athletes there is are O linemen and D linemen. They might not get the glory, but but it's crazy yeah. what a lot of those guys are able to do. Who are some like? sneaky strong guys in the gym on this team who are some guys that could really push weights that, that might surprise you um oh man i'm putting you on the um, spot here yeah no i'm, I'm trying to think a lot of guys have changed um teams <laughs> <laughs> so um it's it's so mo Diallo is one of them he's just yeah mo yeah he's just special he's just a special Special. He had a lot of God given. Yeah. Where he could, which he could just move and just explosive. Um, so he's one uh, staff. Staff. Yeah. Rooms. Really. Okay. Uh, his lower body strength is is legit mm-hmm. uh, for a guy that his, his size. Uh, so I like his. Um, who else is legit? You know, who's interesting is um, is Tim White. Okay. Pound for pound. He might be the strongest on the team. Okay, wow. That's crazy. Pound for pound, he might be the strongest on the team. 
Uh, and it makes sense it. seeing see yeah. what that guy can do. Nothing surprises me about Tim White. Exactly. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's so crazy. Impressive. And then now that we're getting closer to training camp, our players schedules or their training, is it starting to heat up here? Do you want them to start maybe getting a little bit stronger, moving a little bit harder than they were maybe back in January? Um, football specific wise. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, the goal since the beginning of March all the way to the end of the offseason is I just want a flat line as far as the amount of uh, stress that is in the weight room, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And any increase in stress or any increase in training is going to happen on the football field. Yeah. So uh, the reason why I want that is because I need them to be in great football shape, yep. right? You can be in great CrossFit shape by doing a lot of weight room work. Mm -hmm. But the type of stress that your body goes through under a barbell doing a squat and the type of stress your body goes through when you're a D lineman and you're exploding to another lineman and you're trying to withstand that force is two different types of feelings, right? And that's where you get a lot of guys who come and they look good and they measure good, but then they get hurt. And because they don't have football specific strength. For sure. So that's why, you know, making sure you have that field work and a high volume field work is really important because that's how you develop uh, or you transfer weight room strength into field strength. How much of a test or how on the body is a, tr- a CFL training camp? Like how, how much, oh, how, right. like you can't really prepare for a training camp in the CFL, no matter how much you've trained over the summer Man, or the winter. That's, I'm so glad you said that. Cause that's exactly what it is where, no matter for me to try to match the amount of stress mm-hmm. that camp is and put that into a workout, I will injure people in the workout. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just, you can't do that. So you do the best you can. You try to get them as resilient as you possibly can through a series of different things, mobility, running temples, different things like that. But at the end of the day, when you get to camp, one of the things that I stress to them uh, when I talked in front of the team last year, and I'll do the same thing this year if I get a chance is it's a race to recovery. Yeah. Because you can't necessarily train for what you're going to go through, your goal is to recover faster than the next man. Yeah. So, like, being a professional or really being good at your job uh, during training camp, of course, is what you do on the field, but also how you take care of your body in between. So, like, are you eating inflammatory foods when your body's already inflamed from from practice True. right if you're not okay you're you're in the right right position if you are dehydrated you know that can significantly negatively impact your performance and increase your strength your uh your chance of getting injured yeah right so it's little things like that that can make a big deal and then once again with certain supplements to help you regenerate yourself faster there's a lot of things you can do but you have to actively do it and guys get tired they get lazy and sometimes they don't and then they suffer the consequences so it's really just a race to recovery Coach, it's always so educational talking to you. I always use a lot of your tips for my own diet and my own workout awesome. plan for, for being a podcaster. So one last awesome. question before we go, but how excited are you to get things going here and get the season underway? Oh, man, I can't wait. It's, as the sun starts to shine and it starts to get a little bit warmer, yeah. we start to get a little closer, you kind of feel that that feeling again, that football feeling. is hard to quantify or explain. But it's a great feeling. We're just trying to make sure we finish on such a high note when it comes to this training so we can all get to camp and all put on the best version of ourselves so we can see, you know, uh, what we got in 2024. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Awesome. I love to hear it, Coach. I'm excited to see you back at the stadium and back at Ron Joyce. And appreciate you joining the show as always. So once again, Coach Marcellus Bowman, strength and conditioning coach for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Thanks for joining me today, man. I appreciate it. Big thanks once again to Coach Boom. Before we go, the Ticats announced they've signed running back Greg Bell. He spent time with the Pittsburgh Steelers last year and the Detroit Lions back in 2022. The six foot, 200 pound native of Chula Vista, California, played 21 games over two seasons at San Diego State University. He totaled 1,728 yards on 358 carries with 15 rushing touchdowns and 15 receptions for 119 yards. He also added a receiving touchdown, another running back heading to training camp. That's all the time for me today. Wishing you all a very safe and happy Easter.